Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brad today has an interesting uh, diary talking about the interaction between Emotet and Quackbot or Qbot. Now, both of them are typically being spread via malicious emails, and they're sort of considered uh, two distinct malware families. Emotet, historically more sort of being a banking trojan, and Quackbot really more being sort of an information stealer. But uh, both of these malware families typically spread via malicious emails, so you would receive an email with an office document that then asks you to enable macros, and then the malware will be be installed. Of course, both of uh, these uh, malware families also have the ability to add additional components and updates later on via command control server that they connect to. Now, the interesting behavior that Brad saw was that these two malware families can also install each other. So what he saw was a malicious Word document that installed Emotet. The Emotet install was then used to install Quackbot, which in turn was used to install Emotet again. So in the end, Brad ended up with two copies of Emotet and Quackbot installed on the same system. Now, it's not clear why this happened. It's possible that uh, this was more or less a mistake uh, by the attacker. Also, uh, this type of malware is often just rendered out as a service to install other malware and uh, maybe that's sort of what happened here or the attacker just tried to get better persistence uh, by installing various pieces of malware in order to not have them all wiped at the same time. And well, we got sadly bad news if you are running Oracle's WebLogic. Last week, we talked about how the CVE 2020-1488-2 vulnerability was already probed. Well, first of all, over the weekend, we saw actual exploits being delivered, including what looked like Cobalt Strike, the infamous backdoor. But that's not all of it. On Friday, a researcher also discovered that the patch released for CVE 2020-14882 is easily bypassed. And that's really something we have seen before with WebLogic, where these patches are really just blocking fairly specific exploits. And as a result, well, uh, we have yet another remote code execution in WebLogic CVE 2020-14750, Oracle did release an emergency update for this and details are available uh, to Oracle uh, customers. But uh, with active exploitation for uh, the old vulnerability already uh, going around and of course the bypass being openly discussed and being rather trivial, it's probably already being used against vulnerable systems. So uh, please, please, please uh, don't expose WebLogic to the open internet and contact Oracle support for the patch if you can't find it directly. This is something you have to apply absolutely this week. And even if WebLogic is used internally, uh, this would be a great sort of lateral movement of vulnerability once someone actually is in your network. And since it's a simple GET request, I could even see this being exploited via essentially cross-site request forging. So uh, that would be another vector here how someone uh, could deploy, for example, a Cobalt Strike backdoor in your network. Renato is preparing a little write-up on this. Uh, Probably on Wednesday, uh, we should have that live. Then we have updates for the Google Chrome browser, which also, of course, may affect uh, the Microsoft Windows Edge browser. Fix a total of 10 security vulnerabilities, one of which is already being exploited in the wild. Uh, So apply the update, uh, but Google Chrome typically takes care of that itself somewhat reliably. 
And Trend Micro also closed uh, vulnerabilities in the antivirus for Mac. And now uh, these are sort of very typical antivirus privilege escalation vulnerabilities. Again, update, nothing all that critical. And a couple people asked via Twitter about a blog post was released about NAT slipstreaming. And now, nice name for a fairly old vulnerability and problem. What really comes down to it is that NAT gateways are often being, well, uh, more fussy about their statefulness than users expect. So if you're connecting to a particular site via TCP, the uh, firewall will not just uh, let in uh, traffic from a particular port from that IP address, but often will allow in all traffic from that particular IP address and forward it to a certain destination that allows someone to essentially port scan the internal host. This behavior is supposed to help with uh, some of the more complex protocols like in online gaming and such, uh, where you connect to a particular game server, but that game server may connect back uh, from or to a different port. And uh, this sort of more sloppy statefulness uh, will allow for these connections uh, to happen. Like I said, this has been discussed uh, for at least a decade or two and it's sort of a trade-off that firewalls make in order to make these more complex protocols work. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.